that David Kloniker posted in Courier. Donna, Tessa Johnson's jump shot, specifically her three-pointer. The first question is, have you ever seen one that goes up as high as it did? And the second is, when you first saw it, did you ever try to change it? Um, um, Tessa's three-point high arcing shot um, looks pretty when it goes in. And it looks like it's going to go in every time she shoots the basketball. Um, didn't try to change it. Um, she scored a lot of points in the state of Minnesota. Um, if it's not broken, we're not going to try to fix it. And it's working out well. We, we probably need to get her more shots. Um, so we're not getting her enough shots to, to see that, that ball trajectory hit the ceiling. Um, so, I mean, I, I think she's playing extremely well, not just shooting the basketball, but what, she's, what she does on both sides of the basketball is, is pretty impressive. Hey, Don, Claire Hanna with TSN. Um, during the portion of practice that we could see, you looked loose, you're smiling, joking with players. How would you describe the intensity and energy here now that you've reached the Sweet 16? Um, I, I mean, I, we got a pretty loose team. Um, so you saw the beginning of practice, and they were pretty focused for about 30 minutes. And then they went into a mode of being really loose, um, but, but focused. I think they're... They're probably more focused than they've ever been, but for for a certain amount of time in practice, so I'm, I'm real thankful that the NCAA only gave us 60 minutes because I couldn't take any more than 60 minutes. Daily Judy Gadsden from WIS TV in Columbia. Hey Judy. Good to see you. Um, question: The theme for this year for the team was love. <coughs> what is it that you are loving right now about this team's mindset and preparation? Um, I mean, I, I really, I, I really love this team. One for, for just being their organic selves. Like, we've tried to change them. We've tried to get them to focus a little bit longer, um, but they've created this identity where um, they're they hold each other accountable. They are um, in lockstep with each other, uh, and it was, it was, it was. It was this that was created out of, of, of the love for each other. Like, I, I mean, it's, we've had this before, but in a different way, like in a more focused way. Here, I mean, this year, this team focuses for a period of time and they, they make you feel uncomfortably comfortable with, with how they approach the game. And then on game day, I mean, I, I, I would say 75% of the time, They've, they've gotten us to a good place during the game, whether that's the first, second, or third quarters, or if we needed to finish the game in the fourth quarter. I never feel like we're ever going to lose the game. And it's because of the love they have for each other and the love they have for winning. Hey, Coach Doug Feinberg, the AP. The, the viewership numbers are through the roof. The attendance numbers are through the roof, thanks to you guys, a huge part of that. You get to play now on Friday, Sunday instead of the Saturday, Monday. Do you like where the tournament is right now? Is there anything you'd want to change going forward from it, or do you like having the top 16 hosts and that sort of thing? Yeah, I'm I'm pretty comfortable with, um, and I'm not just saying that because we get the host, we've earned it. You know, the top 16 seeds in the in the country have earned it. I think it cleans up the game a little bit, and it, it leaves, I, I would say, less of less of the control into the hands of the committee who has a big job. So if they can if they can get this the 16 um, squared away, it helps them concentrate on the other areas, and I, I do think the people on their their campuses have done a great job um, getting people to attend the game. Um, I think our game is in a, a really good place. It, I, I, I mean, the the viewership numbers are there, the attendance is there, the star power is there. Um, I mean, the coaching is there the you know the backing of administrators uh, for us our local media has always been there like always have covered our team um so it's pretty cool to see i hope that i hope that every every team that's here sends um their local media because they do the heavy lifting of uh of following the teams and getting it out to the to the national media um katie barnes espn uh, you said that you really feel like Malaysia respects the game. 
Um, what is it about her that makes you feel that way? Um, I mean, one, it gets her going to class. Big, it's huge. I mean, it's, it's hard. Like, I think Malaysia is one that, um, I mean, she was a star of her high school, you know, so I'm sure, you know, she's got a charismatic personality. She's, um, she's funny, she's smart. So she probably utilized that to probably come late some days um, at her high school. And when you make that transition to college, it's, it's different. You know, professors want to see your face. They want to make sure that you are um, entertaining them in their classroom, in their setting, just like she entertains everybody else on the basketball court. And for the love of the game, she does the things that she doesn't want to do so she can continue to love up on the game. Then hand it right behind you. Uh, ben Pickman from The Athletic. Um, you guys have started fast. You know, you play really strong first quarters and first halves overall. I guess, what do you view the key to starting fast is? And is that something you even message at this point in the season? Or do you just kind of, you know, assume that you guys are going to, you know, come out the way you have all year? Uh, I mean, we've had some slow starts. Um, I, I think with, with this particular, I, I think we've started out quick. And then somewhere in the middle of the season, um, people have jumped out on us. Um, and then we haven't responded well until later on in the game. Um, but I think now, um, I just think we're playing our best basketball. Like, I, the, I questioned it going into the SEC tournament. And then during the SEC tournament, um, we weren't just clicking on both sides of the basketball. Like, I mean, there were spurts of it, but when we had a little bit of time to practice um, between the SEC tournament championship and then our first round, I mean, we did, a, we did a lot of rest, but then when we got back from our break, we just really honed in. They, they were probably, um, they probably thought I was a little like tight, they would say. And it's not that I was tight, it was more so that I know was coming down the pipeline. And they just have a way of making me feel uncomfortable like and so I mean you're I'm a look sound feel coach if something looks sounds or feel off then I'm going to address it and and put whatever prep we need to you know whatever whatever um challenges I, we need to put in front of them they have to meet those challenges and I thought they they really did a good job of meeting the challenges leading up to the first and second round. And I, I, I do think they're still there as far as practice. Although it's shorter, but you know it's, it's in there. It's, it's really in there, they're paying attention. Coach Griffin Haas uh, with News 10 ABC here in Albany. Uh, in talking with uh, the general manager here at the arena, he said that they expected this to be the biggest NCAA event that they've ever hosted. They've hosted a, you know, many. Uh, and he also expected it to be the biggest economic impact in the city, in the community. What does that say about the growth of the women's game and the draw of bringing all those people into the city? I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a, a double-edged sword when it comes to this answer. Um, one is, I've said it before, that it's been intentional to hold women's basketball back. I do. It's no longer intentional anymore because they see we're bursting at the seams. And for the general manager to say that, you know, he's, he's going to ride this wave as long as, as it's, it's high. It's high right now. And um, we just want to be a sport. We want, just want to be treated as a sport. We just want um, an opportunity to be seen. And I do feel like there has been, um, it's been very intentional to put us on TV. Like, our sport on TV and everywhere. Like I've watched so many basketball games this season. I had access to so many games, so many um, Pac-12 games, Big Ten games, SEC games. Like you really had a choice to make. And you, I had to be intentional what game I was going to watch on any given day. And that's been super cool. And if I feel like that, and I'm, I'm a basketball, a women's basketball enthusiast, I know there was access to so many other people and they've, they've tuned in and they've, they've come in arenas and they've attended games. So it's, it's pretty cool to see us 
um, forcing our way into this space. And I just don't think we're gonna, we're gonna slow down anytime soon. Hey Don, Chantel Jennings with The Athletic, right here. Kind of a good follow-up to that. I was just wondering about those games on TV, specifically getting them on ESPN, ABC, Fox, like the main channels. I think you guys had eight ESPN games, three ABC games this season. Is that the number one way, given where the game is, to like move it forward and find more fans? Is TV the number one thing? I, I, I think that's part of it, um, you know, but if, if ABC, um, if, ABC, if, if we're on ABC, it's probably only two games on a Sunday. It's four teams. And it's probably the same teams playing on ABC. <laughs> we, 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 gotta, we gotta broaden that. Although we know the, the teams that are playing on ABC are the, the most viewed teams, the most popular teams. Um, there's more popular teams out there that we're not broadcasting. And I know you have to start somewhere. So I don't, you know, I don't mind them starting where they can get the more bang for their buck and, and grow the game. But when we get to a, to a place where um, it doesn't matter, but it matters. Like there are other, you know, like I, I like to see USC, the Trojans on, I like to see them. I mean, Juju's got a big name, but the team is a good, they're a good team that we, we know there's more than Juju. So I want to know more about the rest of the roster for me because there's a possibility that we'll play them. So I want to, I want to have access to, I want to sit down in my living room and watch them. So it's, it's that part of it. And I think it'll get there. I'm, I'm sure they'll play some ABC games uh, um, next season. Coach Staley, Erica Ayala with CBSSports.com. Um, this year we've seen a lot of records be called up, um, whether they've been broken or players reaching them, Jackie Styles, Kelsey Mitchell, uh, even Pearl Moore. When you see that pioneers of the game, even pioneers of the AIAW before the NCAA are a part of the conversation of arguably one of the biggest women's basketball seasons that we've seen. What do you see as the value added and the power in that? And how do you introduce maybe some of those names to your players? Um, I mean, here's the thing. We, we, those are the forgotten names. And they're only, bringing, they're only brought up because there, there's a record that was being broken. Um, where we haven't done a, a great job at historically um, producing uh, documentaries on the history of women's basketball. We have to do a better job. Like, like this day and age will be documented and told a million times. And I hope uh, when that's being told that we, we pull from, from the, the the legends, the people that have, you know, we're, we're, we're standing on their shoulders because of what they've done. And what they've done should not, have, should not be forgotten. Um, so it's cool to hear, you know, those names being brought up in conversations um, because records have been broken. Um, now we need to do the, we, we need to do the entire documentary on it. You know, this is, this is, this was, was then this is now, and and this is how we're going to move forward with some of the some of the more popular names that are that are out there in our game. Hey Don, Rick Henry, WIS TV, Columbia. Last time you faced Indiana, 2019-2020 season, they handed you your only loss of the season. What role did that play in your team going on and not losing another game that season? Well, with, with this team, nothing. With me, I, I, it's a, the vivid game that I remember us losing um, in the Virgin Islands. Um, I actually look back at that box score. They scored 24th quarter points. We scored six. Yikes. Um, it, was a good, it was a really good game. It was a very physical basketball game. Um, and it was probably one of the games that, I mean, we haven't lost very many of them. So I remember the ones that, we, that we've lost over the past couple of uh, seasons. Um, but well-coached team, did what they needed to do to win. Um, but something good actually came out of that, that particular loss. We ended up winning that, that tournament in, a, in the Virgin Islands on, 
on on points. So that was that was kind of cool to do that um, in Aaliyah's hometown, and we had a we had an island party after that. It was pretty <laughs> cool. <laughs> Don Patty, you know, with the Associated Press. I understand the one game at a time mentality, but your team is four games away from becoming just the fifth school to go undefeated in the season. How aware is your team of that history? How important is it to them, and how much pressure are they feeling? They have they have zero idea. They have short memories. I mean, they they only deal in the present, which is which is pretty cool. Like you don't have to talk them off of a ledge because they're. You know, they're they're thinking it's going to be an easy thing. They take one game at a time. I, I probably during the I, I would say this during the time between the SEC tournament um, championship and and that prep time, I thought we were a little loose, and I thought we thought it was going to be easy moving forward. And my energy spoke to we got we got to keep the main thing, the main thing, and the main thing right now is our next opponent. We didn't know who our opponent was at that time, but then, and then we had to do media for the first round. And I did hear our players talk about some stuff I've never heard them talk about that's in the future. And I'm like, no, we have to, we have to talk about Presbyterian. That is the only team that matters at this point. Like right now, Indiana is the only team that matters at this point because the margin, you know, the margin of victory is so small at, at this stage of the game. So, um, and this team really doesn't know that. I mean, they know it from, from playing in the SEC and, and, and coming to some near losses, but they don't know it on this scale in the NCAA tournament. So I just want to keep them focused on what's right in front of us. Yeah, Last uh, one will be there. Um, Mike Vopel from ESPN.com. Coach, um, obviously you've gone against a lot of great post players and uh, perimeter players, but I wonder if you could give some thoughts on Holmes and, and the shooters for Indiana and maybe the, the different challenges, especially with Holmes, you know, having the experience she has inside. Yeah. Um, when, I, when I think of Holmes, I think of Peely, like, and I think of Utah. Like, um, to have played them gives us, a you know, some familiarity with – um, how they, how they, they keep you balanced. Like, Peely was one that you can get her the ball and she can go to work. So I, I got nightmares from from that because we we couldn't stop her. So we have to do a better job. Holmes is, you know, very similar um, in the paint. You know, Peely was all over the. Peely could bang a three. Peely can go mid range. Peely could take you off the dribble. I think Holmes is one that. She does her damage in the paint. If we can get her to take some 15-footers, ooh, we, we're, we're doing our job. But we know that 90% of, 95% of what she's going to do is work us over in the paint. So, I mean, our position, positioning is going to be great, have to be great in order to contain her. Um, and then, you know, their perimeter players um, have the ability to shoot the ball. They're, most, they're one of the most uh, efficient teams um, offensively in the country. So so we need to we need to disrupt. We need to make them play a little bit faster than they want to play. And you know, our defense definitely has to show up and from an offensive standpoint, depending on how they play us, whether they play off of us or whether they get into us or or somewhere in between, um, we have to move the basketball. The ball can't stick. I think we're we're our best when we've gotten a, a reversal or two and everybody touches the ball and makes the defense move. So hopefully we can have some of what we brought to the table uh, in the first and second round. Last one, go ahead. Yeah, Mike Nizek from the Herald Times. You mentioned that the 2019 game, IU similar, very you know, different than, than what the team you scouted back then. I mean, do you remember kind of what were any common threads you've seen from them back then? I mean, McKenzie's the only person left on that team and them now. Um, I mean, I think basketball from then until now <laughs> is much better. Like in that short period of time, players are better. Like freshmen are better because they've seen, um, they've seen women play um, at the top of their games. So they come in much better prepared for situations like this. Um, so they could be very similar in style of play, but they could be more efficient at what they're doing. And, and I, to me, that's what Indiana is. They're more efficient with what they're doing. And it doesn't matter, you know, 
It doesn't matter their age. Um, Terry does a great job at coaching up her team on both sides of the basketball. So there, there's, there won't be a cakewalk. I hope it is, you know, favoring us. But I know, you know, in my heart of hearts and my basketball um, knowledge and understanding of of prepping for them, I mean, it's going to be a really hard game. Coach, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.